Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. I'm Dr. Robin. With me today, I have Ian Hendry. He's with Elevated Elements, where he helps businesses upgrade their lighting correctly the first time to get the best ROI. I have Terry Hill. She's the co-creator of Emerging Entrepreneurs Academy, which introduces high school students to entrepreneurship and business ownership. And I have Stuart Wiggins with Induna Advisors, where he is a chief operating officer at a fractional level. Got to reach out to him if you need an operating officer. The question I have for you today is, is the saying, the truth hurts, true or an excuse to be thoughtless? Terry, can you kick us off? Yes, I can. Robin, this is such a philosophical question. We can go down that rabbit hole, but I want to give you my first impression when I saw or, you know, this question that you posed to us, I immediately thought of you know, taking criticism. How do we take criticism? It's how we receive it is, is whether it's hurtful or not. I know we, some of us have read the books, Crucial Conversations, and in it, they address that. The ability to, to accept or interpret criticism depends on our interpretation of their intention. Mm. So do we believe that the person providing us with the feedback is intending to help us? Or do we believe that the person providing the feedback is trying to hold us back, demean us? And it's all about how we interpret their intention, which it, it makes us feel whether it's hurtful or not. And that's the first thing that came to mind. So I want to start it with that. It's funny you say that. So that's, I was kind of thinking along the same lines when I, I read it. Again, it's, are you intentionally trying to be hurtful? Or um, in my case, it may come out hurtful. It's not intentionally being hurtful, but it's trying to help somebody. And, and a lot of the times with, a lot of us, we can't take, we say we can take criticism, but we can't take actual criticism. And then, so we go around the corner and whine about what somebody else said, even though it was a good intent, right? I don't know if it's a new generation. I think it's everybody. And until you get to a certain point in your life, you can accept and be able to really own who you are is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. to, to own those criticisms or judgments or uh, helpful hints, if you will. Okay. Stuart? Who's the, who's the audience? And the reason why I ask that is, is because if it's your spouse or a friend, can that direct response be taken differently than if you are in a work environment? So in a work environment, you know, I've been accused of being too direct but is there really time to nuance the feedback hmm. if you're trying to get something done? Whereas if it's in a personal relationship, then more direct communication, most likely from my perspective, is less hurtful. Unless you're in some, like with your spouse or something, and you're in a more heated discussion, hmm. then you have to be able to gauge the response of the audience. So the truth doesn't really hurt. It's not the truth. It's just the package. I mean, I can tell you the truth and nuance it in such a way. And you walk away and you say, that was pretty good. And I walk away saying, I hope they got it. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So, so I, I grew up believing that if it was true, it shouldn't hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. And I can definitely tell you that as a young woman first, in, you know, cause I first started working in the corporate world when I was 19 years old. I was not very nice to people. Like I said things that were hurtful in a way that I, I wasn't careful and I had to learn to be careful. So I feel like when someone says, well, the truth hurts, it's an excuse to not be careful. That's my opinion. Are you going to tell somebody they're overweight? If, if they're asking me my opinion, especially as someone who's gone through nutrition studies and, and written a book about nutrition, if they're asking my opinion, I'm going to give them a straight answer. Am I going to randomly walk up to people and tell them that? No. Okay. I, 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 I can take that. I, you know, having owned a, a weight loss business, I would probably nuance it and say, I don't think you're physically as, as fit or as healthy as you could be. Hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so, yeah, so say so the truth, mm -hmm. the, the, the truth is less hurtful mm -hmm. and if, instead of saying something more pejorative. Yeah, agreed. Well, I, on that question, if, if I'm asking if I'm overweight, I probably believe I am, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm hoping somebody's going to discount what I think, but I shouldn't be surprised if they, if they agree, what is really the truth? So is it right. a fact or an opinion? 
Mm -hmm. So it's a fact that we have gravity, that we can't walk off the edge of a a roof without falling to the ground. And that's a fact, but it's an opinion that I'm overweight or if I'm healthy or, you know, it's how do I feel about it? Mm -hmm. So I find, I know a lot of people that I work with or I see, they tend to ask a question. They tend to ask people around them who may not be experts, who may not really understand um, what they're trying to achieve. And then they, they take their opinions as truths. Mm -hmm. and use that to guide their their decision when it's really just an opinion. So what is truth? It's the truth through somebody else's eyes. And do you Mm -hmm. view that as a fact or do you view that as an opinion? Well, and that's a good point because I do feel like if if someone asks you a question and you have to tell them a hard truth, one of the best things you can do is bring data. Mm -hmm. Like say, well, let's look at this. And I mean, especially when I work with clients, I'm not going to tell them you should do this or you should do that. Because to your point, Terry, and they might be my opinion, but I can certainly say in the past, I've seen if someone did, then this happened. What are your thoughts about that? And we can have a good conversation. And I think that's very different than coming at someone and being like, oh, you did this wrong. Yeah, I agree. Ian, what are your I, thoughts at this point? I, I hear, think, I see I mean, your, I see smoke. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I think it depends on the context of what you're talking about too. And in where you are in your life, like you can handle certain people can handle being told anything and everything except on their physical being, mm. right? But their project that they worked on, they think is beautiful, and you tell them their baby's ugly, right? Because that whatever they created doesn't isn't really appealing. They can handle that more than their own physicality versus mm-hmm. that somebody beside them could be quite the opposite, right? I think it just depends on what it is, but I mean, going to what Stuart's ta- talking about and just being political, I guess you could say about how you say things, it doesn't change the message to me. It's still on their shoulders to say someone shared feedback and I can't, whether it's, I mean, again, I'm not going to go and say you're fat or you're ugly or you're stupid or, you know I mean, like, obviously I'm going to use those words, but you could be pretty blunt, I think, without having to baby the situation. Well, that's an interesting question. Like, where is the line between being blunt and beating around the bush so much that people can't even understand the message you're trying to give them? Because I think you can go too far into trying to be kind that, because I say that to people when I teach communication conflict resolution, if you're not saying what you mean, no one's going to understand it, but you have to say it nicely. You can't just be hurtful. So I feel like if someone says, oh, the truth hurts, that's an excuse. Mm -hmm. But if someone's trying, I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. You have to be able to communicate effectively enough so that you can tell the truth regardless of whether it is going to quote unquote hurt. Listen, in, in most cases, people already know the truth. If you fire somebody, they're not surprised that they got fired. They knew that it was going to happen. It's just the same token if someone's grotesquely overweight. I mean, they know they're overweight. Mm-hmm. You can't mitigate it by saying, well, it's not healthy. But you could say it in a way where they think, okay, I get it. It's like you with facts, all right? Are you going to tell a flat earther that the world is round? Or are you going to come to them with facts and say, the world's not flat? We're not mm-hmm. going to argue with them because it's a waste of time. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I think the other thing that we haven't touched on, which we only have a couple of seconds to speak on, is that it also depends upon whether you're doing this in public or in private. I think that if you're in private, you can be much more direct with someone, still kind, but more direct. Whereas if you're in public, you need to be really careful because you could shame someone accidentally. You're right. The context, if you, if you think about a, um, a supervisor and employee relationship, you'd prefer that that be done behind closed doors mm-hmm. if it's the correct behavior rather than being done in the middle of a, a floor with all their coworkers. It's not good for anybody necessarily to see it that way. So mm-hmm. you're right. There needs to be the right atmosphere and the right environment to, to do it so that it can be handled appropriately. Yeah, I was taking a, a class once and the teacher called me up and was like, can you do that again for us? And she used me as a bad example. And I was absolutely mortified. No, I just wasn't kind, nothing about that. So don't, don't do that to people. Even if I'm doing it wrong, don't use me as a bad example for other people. That's mortifying. 
<laughs> so that I is our imagine. I can't imagine. It was so bad. That is our 10 minutes. Thank you so much for having this conversation with me. I look forward to speaking to each of you again really soon.